Hello everyone and welcome to Guild Wars 2 Daily. So today I've got a couple of questions about the professions in the game, a couple of different aspects on that regard, and also a question about the Elder Dragons and what might happen later on in the game once we've had a few expansions, and generally about how good ArenaNet have been at future-proofing the game for when it's had a fair few years behind it. So the first question comes in from Oog the Almighty, who says, are there any professions that are particularly good against other professions? So this is an idea that comes up in a lot of other games. You kind of had one profession that's good at countering another, and in fact in Guild Wars 1, there was something of that in there too. For example, it was pretty widely considered that Mesmers were good at countering other caster professions, particularly when you got into high-end PvP, generally monks. They were kind of considered monks bane, and there were various other dynamics like that, but I think that was the most prominent one in Guild Wars 1. And yeah, it happens a lot in other games, so does Guild Wars 2 have it as well. And as far as we can see, not really. I mean, the classes are distinct in different ways, which means that there will be situations where you may have a certain weapon set equipped that's particularly good against a weapon set that someone else of another profession is using. But in general, because you can swap your skills so easily on the fly, I think it's a little bit too black and white to say that in Guild Wars 2, you can have one profession that is directly against another. I think that's for a few reasons, and that's in particular I think it comes down to the fact we don't actually have that many classes in Guild Wars 2. They've put eight into the game, but they've been generally very, very careful about those eight. They've made sure that all eight are very distinct. They've tried to make sure they fit all of the archetypes or roles, and I think they've done a pretty good job of that. You do hear every now and then somebody complains that there's not a Death Knight type character, or that there's not a specific theme of character like a Time Mage or a Blue Mage. But in general, I think people are quite happy. ArenaNet said that the way they were designing the professions when they were first kind of figuring out what they wanted. They even said that actually at one point in the game's development there were 12. But they said essentially they boiled it down to notable figures in other games or other media like books, films, and they said can you find a character in a fantasy setting that you think you'd like to play as? And if so, can you play something similar to that in Guild Wars 1? So I believe actually the specific example they gave was Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings. They said well yeah you can kind of be like him, you can be the ranger, you can have your greatsword out. And that's kind of how they work through it and I think it works out quite well. But because there are so few Few professions. That does tend to mean that there aren't going to be specific professions put in the game that are going to be countering each other directly, as you tend to find in other games where there are a lot of classes like that. I think another big reason why they went down this path was that their PvP game type, if we look at this from a PvP perspective, involves a lot of 1v1 fights as well as larger team fights. And because of this, I think they want to have the balance in such a place where you never know who's going to win. Is the Necromancer with tons more health going to beat the Elementalist who's got water achievement for more support abilities to help themselves out? Who, who can win? And I think that's where the excitement from the PvP is going to be coming from, where it's not just a clear-cut situation of, oh dear, our warrior's just gone up against that guardian, we've made a bad decision, the guardian's going to win instantly. I do think that adds a little bit of strategy to the game, but the individual fights, I think, lose a lot of excitement when a game's designed that way. So ArenaNet have tried to keep it so that no matter what pairing has occurred, no matter who's fighting who, there's always the chance for something interesting to happen. I, I don't dispute that there probably will be at launch, and you can probably look at the health and the skills and traits and all different variables right now, and you can probably say, ah, right, well, the elementalists are clearly better than Rangers. And I guess you can make those assumptions. And I'm sure when the game actually comes out and we're a year down the line, say, and balance has changed massively and all the different classes are in different positions to where they were at launch, I think there will still be the chance that some people are going to be definitely better than others. But I don't think that's necessarily what ArenaNet are aiming for. All the professions have the capability of working at all the ranges and providing the three main roles support, control, and damage. They can all do all three of these things. And this is obviously due to the fact that ArenaNet have been making a lot of push towards breaking the Trinity, and really this is one of the nice things about that fact. Now that there is no Trinity, it opens up to a lot more dynamic and exciting situations, even when we're not talking about team versus team scenarios, where it's just 1v1 now, because everyone has the capability of healing themselves and filling all of the roles they need to to survive and deal damage. It's anyone's guess, I think, most of the time, and that's where PvP in particular is really going to shine. Death Sim Productions asks, what possible content do you think ArenaNet might have after all the Elder Dragons are defeated? This actually appeared on my lore video, um, and I thought, eh, is this kind of a lore question? But, you know, we can we can put in a gameplay spin here, because really this is a question about the game's longevity. What's going to be happening here? And I've seen a lot of people discussing the same thing. So, the world, we've had it set up that there's five Elder Dragons, and the game at launch is particularly going to be focusing on killing one of those dragons, Zaitan. So, that's kind of the setup that we've got for Guild Wars 
Wars 2. You go into the game and you will finish the game having defeated Zaitan. But there's a lot of questions here. A lot of questions. People aren't quite sure how this is going to work. Because not only is there lore that suggests we won't ever be able to defeat Zaitan, but rather put him to sleep. There's also the question of how is it going to be that we can defeat this Elder Dragon in our personal story. And yet the world, the actual persistent world of the game, is still going to have hordes of undead attacking people in armies and massive dynamic events going on everywhere. How does that work? There's a disconnect there. And people aren't sure how it's going to end. Are we going to be able to defeat Zaitan at the end of the game in our personal story? Will that just happen in an instance? Or is it going to be designed so that there is a huge meta event going on right there at the end of the game, which involves hundreds of players having to push and attack the continent of Or and actually defeat the real dragon Zaitan in the real persistent world, granting Tyria a respite of the undead dragon's minions and the dragon himself, obviously, for a short while, but then he'll always come back. Is that what they're going to do? Nobody's really sure, and it's an interesting question because it could have a big knock-on effect as to what's happening with the expansions of the game. Are we to assume that once we beat Zaitan and a year's passed and the next expansion's coming out that it's just going to be the same formula that we'll go to another continent and then perhaps defeat another Elder Dragon, or we'll be able to go to some of these other regions that are going to be unexplorable at the launch of the game, such as the Crystal Desert, that with this first expansion we'll be able to go there and then fight the Elder Dragon that's residing there such as Kralkatorik. Are we just going to suggest that every single expansion is going to be more dragons? See, now that could be something you'd be interested in seeing. I think this comes down to personal opinion a lot of the time, really. I can see the appeal of every single expansion we're fighting a harder and harder and harder dragon, and it's this long slog, and then in, you know, five years' time, we finally beat the last one, and it feels amazing. And that's kind of the end of Guild Wars 2's story. The story was always about the Elder Dragons, and now they're dealt with. But on the other hand, I can see, and a lot of people do say this, that that could be quite boring. Is that really going to be very interesting for us? Just the same story rehash? over and over again. Are they going to do that? I'm a personal believer that we'll probably get to the second expansion or maybe even the first expansion and very quickly we'll find ourselves fighting two or maybe even three Elder Dragons at once just to kind of push that whole aspect of the story out of the door and we can start focusing on other things. But it all ties back into how the story is actually going to end at launch. How are they going to deal with this? Is it going to be that Zaitan is never truly defeated? We just send him back to sleep for a short period of time or even a long period of time? Because depending on that that answer, depending on how they answer this question and get around this conundrum, it's going to affect how the expansions are going to work. I've seen a lot of people asking recently about how they're future-proofing the game with expansions, particularly with regards to certain mechanics like, are they going to raise the level cap with expansions and things like that? But I think this is a really core question to be asking. What are they going to do with the storyline here? How is this all going to be concluded? And indeed, is there going to be a conclusion at all? Because obviously, if we can't defeat these Elder Dragons, even though this is kind of the focus of the entire campaign, albeit with lots of other stuff splattered in there as well. If we can't actually defeat them in the end, is that going to feel very satisfying? I'm not sure. So, I guess I've sort of answered your question there. If I were to actually say what I think they'll go into after the Elder Dragons are defeated, that's more of a lore thing. So, hey, maybe we'll do that tomorrow. But, yeah, a very interesting topic, and I am very curious about the future-proofing of the game, because it's something a lot of companies I don't think do consider, but should be working on from ground up, especially when you're looking at an MMO, which is supposed to be lasting for a very long time. You don't want to be in the same situation as a lot of other MMOs are, where they didn't expect that they'd be coming up on their fifth or sixth expansion already, and they're struggling to find new content. I think ArenaNet do have to be thinking about this kind of thing, and so do we. The last question comes in from Jinath, who says, Any ideas as to which class or classes will be the easiest to play? Ah, see, this is a good question. Lots of people have been asking this as time's gone on, and it's been really funny to see how the answers changed a lot. For example, when they first started revealing the professions, they kind of made out that they were revealing them in an order of difficulty, that some of the more simple professions were being announced first, and then the more complicated ones, in particular the Mesmer, the Thief come to mind, were going to be revealed later so that players could get more of an idea of the more complicated mechanics of the game once the other ones had already been sort of set in stone and revealed to the public with the previous professions. However, as time's gone on, this has really started to break a little bit. Uh, the Elementalist, the very first profession that was announced for the game, has really become something of a complicated class, and a lot of developers now, you can see when they do questions and answers themselves or in interviews, will say, hey, look, yeah, the Elementalist, man, there is so much to consider there. Because the Elementalist can obviously swap their attunements, which means that while most classes can weapon swap, which means they have 
10 skills on the left hand side of the skill bar essentially 10 things to learn and they can swap between them and start comboing off in interesting ways with those 10 skills elementalists have got 20 to be working on the entire time and that's not to mention the fact that they have conjure skills which will then change their skill bar yet again into a whole other load of skills so the elementalist is shaping up i think a lot of people are starting to say as one of the more difficult classes because it's got such a matrix of skills to be learning from in particular when you're in the earth attunement your skill one attack is a projectile that will react with cross profession combinations while in other attunements you might not necessarily have a projectile that does that so you get a lot of really complicated moves that you have to be considering as an elementalist where you might be playing as a fire elementalist and laying down a wall of fire and then being smart enough to realise that your key skills might not be on recharge and you're going to have to swap into earth to start getting the projectiles to essentially do cross-profession combinations off of yourself and there are so many skills and so many aspects to the skills there on the elementalist that it's really becoming quite massive the amount of different things you're going to be able to do and depending on the situation you're currently in so that one definitely is exciting me quite a lot and that's why that's a class that I can't wait to be playing. There are obviously the other classes that are still looking as complicated as they were ever intended to be, such as the Mesmer who is reprising their role as a control oriented profession, which just by virtue of the fact that's what the Mesmer's trying to do means that Mesmer's are going to have to have a deeper knowledge of what their opponents can do to be effective in combat. But not only that, the Mesmer's have also got very complicated skill types themselves to be fiddling around with, such as portals and all kinds of other various things that will inevitably make it much more difficult and interesting to play a Mesmer. For example, when you're using your illusions, a big part of being a Mesmer is being able to shatter those illusions when they're in the right position. So there's a lot of position-based stuff playing as a Mesmer. There's not necessarily your character's position, but the bodies of other things around you that you might not have 100% control over. So that sounds very cool. Uh, as for the easier professions, I think really oh, we're all kind of pointing at the warrior, aren't we? It's always quite surprising though, because in Guild Wars 1, the warrior was widely considered as one of the easier professions to play. However, as time went on, particularly with the very competitive PvP side of things, it very quickly became one of those classes that had a low starting threshold of difficulty, but you could work on that a lot and there was a very, very high skill cap for a warrior and in the end you could really tell who the very badass warriors were and I would not be surprised to see that warriors are going to fill the same role in Guild Wars 2. And hey, hopefully, I guess the idea that a good design of any game really is that all of the professions are like that. It shouldn't be about how difficult the profession is when you're first getting into them, but rather to what heights you can take that profession by the end of the game. So, you can definitely see that some professions are going to be easier if you will to get to grips with and I certainly would be recommending certain uh, certain professions over others you can look at a lot of the beta footage that's out already some of it I've already put on my channel where you can clearly see that these more difficult professions balanced or not the game is in a beta state but balanced or not though you can see that they are hard to work with and people are getting confused with Guild Wars 2 throwing so much more on there with being able to move with so many of the abilities and just how fiddly it's going to be using WAS and D and constantly hitting those skills 1, 2 and 3 which at the end of the day are going to be your most frequently used skills on your bar those are just something that all professions are going to have to contend with straight away that's very different to other MMOs so jumping into a harder profession that has to deal with all of the unique quirks of Guild Wars 2 system as well as the quirks of that difficult profession probably isn't a good idea I, I would say that really the warrior, the ranger and even yeah to an extent the elementalist because despite having this huge matrix of skills it would be quite easy I suppose to just learn your fire skills for example really well and still be able to nuke things down it's only when you take it to that extra level that it's going to be really hard I'd say those really would be the good ones to start with but hey if the game's designed well Guild Wars 2 is obviously not going to be throwing you into insanely difficult situations from the off hopefully it'll be a while when you will have got a firm understanding about your profession before you start trying to do the high-end explorable dungeons let's hope so anyway but there you go guys that's me done for the day uh, thank you very much for watching I've now got through really all the questions I wanted to answer on that very initial video we did about a week ago by the way yay one week on this series it's going awesome I'm really really happy with it so please feel free to leave any more questions you might have now I'll definitely be looking at the latest videos that I've put up for my questions in the future don't hold back and uh, yeah that's about it guys so thanks very much and I will see you next time